as well as I wanted to bring up a few concerns I have with him. As you see, like these lovely instruments here. That is so they can do a flexible sigmoidoscopy here. I am over with my doctor's appointment, and let me tell you something, I was not expecting that at all. This is one hell of a, one hell of a doctor's appointment, not gonna lie. New weird thing done to me. another day this appointment I'm not expecting much out of it today I have an appointment with my colorectal surgeon follow-up from my seton removal surgery I had my initial like post-op you know appointment and then this is like a further post-op appointment as well as I wanted to bring up a few concerns I have with him there are some issues that I'm having with my stoma obviously as I've mentioned before I am prolapsing a lot and this caused me some pain some discomfort and I just want to make sure that I am on the right track that I'm doing everything that I can and that we're doing everything right so this appointment should just be quick clean cut simple because this is also informing him about the issues that I'm having with my stoma with my GI doctor as I said before my Crohn's disease is starting to come back at the site of the stoma it's it is difficult wrap your head around it because imagine I've been going through this for so many years medication after medication treatment after treatment and at this point surgery after surgery and it, it sucks for sure it definitely sucks but you know we're going to keep moving forward we're gonna power through it and see what is in store. My concern right now is that with my stoma, I am bleeding. I saw like, it started with like one little itty bitty 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 dot, white dot, and I looked at it and I was like, I started wiping it with some gauze when I was changing my bag and I was like, huh, it ain't going away. Next bag change, it wasn't one dot, it was a couple of dots, like a small little cluster. And I was like, oh, this is, this is not good. This is different. It has progressively gotten a little bit worse, a little bit worse, a little bit worse. I showed him my GI doctor and he said, those are ulcers. That is a sign that your disease is still active and is starting to come back. Even though just a few weeks before I saw my GI doctor, he told me my Crohn's disease score is zero. Zero inflammation. All the biopsy came back perfect. So it, you know, technically I was in remission, which is amazing. I was super happy. All of this has been, you know, worth the journey because I'm at a very good point in my health. And then this starts again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go talk to him today. Uh, let him know what's going on. He's probably gonna want to see it, and you know, look at my stoma, make sure everything is okay with it. We'll go from there because again, this is a very delicate thing to have for sure. But it's not to the point of any moment you something can go wrong. No, it's not that. It's just you got to be on top of your health. That's the thing. I could have let this go months and months and months and months with no worry in the world because I don't feel pain like I used to, you know, with my Crohn's disease. I just go into the bag and I don't care and problem solved. I could have let this go on for a long time. I caught this within a couple of weeks because, again, we're very on top of my health because I have been in a very good place, I have been in a very, very bad place, and I pick good place every single time if possible, and I'm pretty sure everybody does. So I am, per se, you know, mortally terrified of, you know, having a downhill spiral again out of control with my health. I don't want to get to that point. I do have my wife. I have my daughter. I need to think about them. I need to think about my family. So that's why I'm on top of it. Let's go on this journey. Unfortunately, you don't see Janice here right now because she is upstairs taking care of the baby. I'm going to be heading to this appointment by myself. And uh, let's, you know, see what happens. Again, I'm not expecting much, but, you know, we'll go talk to him, see what he says.
feedback. As you can see, these posters that are from like the 90s. We're here, I'm gonna see the doctor now, talk to him about what's going on with my Crohn's disease, with everything, and see what he says, what he wants to do. Obviously, reconnecting is out of the question for the foreseeable future until my Crohn's disease is 100% under control. See what he says, what advice he can give, and see what he has in store for me as far as like my severe prolapsing issue and since this is going to have to be i wouldn't say permanent bag but a semi-permanent bag for the foreseeable future what are some options for me since i do prolapse and it causes pain as you see like these lovely instruments here you got a tv right there that is so they can do a flexible sigmoidoscopy here in the in the office not a colonoscopy, they only go in a little bit, but I don't want to be awake for that. Just saying I don't want to be awake for that, guys. Okay, guys, so I am over with my doctor's appointment, and let me tell you something. I was not expecting that at all. He literally stuck his fingers inside of my stoma. Yes, not only that, he was like, okay, yeah, he put he gloved on, let me get some lube, and then he's like, here, I'm just gonna, you know, feel around a little bit. In. He's like there, he's like, yeah, I feel the little, yeah, I feel the inflammation area. And I'm like, uh. Can you buy me dinner first? And then he was like, you know what? Let me do a real quick flexible scope on you really quick. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, bro, what the heck? As I said in the previous clip, like they do flexible sigmoidoscopies in the office and stuff like that. Um. They did one on me today, but not a sigmoidoscopy. What he did see was just a small cluster of what looks like ulcers right at the beginning of my colon when they go in. And he did see it. He's like, okay, I see exactly what, you know, is what I was telling him about. Right now, I am trying to recuperate from this. I wasn't expecting this. And here's the best part. I usually have a bag with all my ostomy supplies because my bags are one piece. So I can't just take the top off for them to look and do anything and I just pop it right back on. So they had to remove my entire bag. Not a big deal. I have spare bags. I have bags that are like temp bags that just throw them on the last for 12 hours and there's no cutting, you just slap it on. Yeah, I don't have my bag. I'm in a different car. Janice has the bag in the other car. I'm in my car. I did not have any supplies with me and I wasn't expecting this. That's why I was like, oh, it's, it's okay. I, I've left my supplies at home, whatever, not a big deal. Hey, we're gonna have to remove it. Do you guys have bags? And they do, thankfully, they have lots of spare stuff. So they're like, yeah, yeah, we got a bag. So they found one, you know, convex that fits me. And they're like, yeah, okay, perfect. It's just for a few hours till I get home. But yeah, guys, this, uh, Janice was not here for this one. And uh, I'm pretty sure she would have loved to see the doctor go like that straight into my abdomen. Just, just saying. This is one hell of a, one hell of a doctor's appointment. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. New weird thing done to me. Now, the benefit of this is that you know, he did feel the slightly inflamed area right where, you know, what looks like ulcers is around, and he's like, I felt a little bit beyond that, and it feels normal. So it's just a small area that is the problem area now. So what he recommends is for me to have an abdominal binder to help the prolapse from going in and out all the time, something to just kind of hold my, my stoma just like, like that, so that I don't prolapse as much. You know, a little prolapse is fine, but mine just, it, you know, it, it, it sticks out a lot. I don't know if this is definitively a prolapsing issue or if it is a Crohn's disease coming back issue. He's like, it could go either one, even though he's like, ulcers are not very common, common with, uh, you know, prolapses. He's like, can it happen? Yes. Is it common? No. So what ends up happening is that he wants me to do the binder. I have to switch to my new medication. And from there, just, you know, keep checking in with him every month. He's like, I want to see you every month, see how you're doing, see how the stoma's going. Now the next step is for me to get my actual binder, abdominal binder on, and then do my Skyrese infusion, which, whole different issue with that. I've been sick, so I've had to skip Skyrese infusions, or not skip, reschedule them, per se.
Alrighty guys, I am back home. It is now the end of the day. I am exhausted. I was out for like four hours between getting to the doctor's office, there was a lot of people there getting checked in, waiting to get to the room, waiting to see the doctor, speaking to him, and then having to prepare myself, get the bag off, him finger my stoma, and then do a small scope on me while all while in the office. Fun times, let me tell you. We have a plan. We're going to start my new medication like I'm supposed to with my GI doctor. Let that kind of start working its magic, hopefully, and then reassess later on. Obviously, my GI doctor is going to want to scope me a full scope again once the medication has had time to work because that's the whole thing. It's just like we need to give the medication and then wait for it to really kick in because these biologic medications, they don't work overnight. Sometimes you will feel relief overnight, and I've had that with certain, like Remicade. I mean, the next day I felt great, but the first few times you get it, your body really has to like, you know, it's like a loading dose per se. So I have to do those, and every single time I'm supposed to do them, I get sick. So it's kind of pushed back that unfortunately so I am just being extra cautious with what I eat and trying to ensure that I don't have any flares that I don't eat anything that I'm not supposed to that will ensue gastrointestinal distress vomiting diarrhea you know acid reflux I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible because I am NOT on any kind of active medication per se so technically it's all a downward spiral from here if I don't continue now obviously I am going to get on my medication, it's just since I'm sick, it is safer for me to wait till I'm not sick to begin my medication. Remember, those biologics, they lower your immune system on purpose. And when they lower your immune system on purpose, guess what? You take forever to fight off infections and fight off getting sick. That is going to be it for today's vlog, guys. I really appreciate all the love and support that we have been getting over these past few videos for me. You know, everyone's telling me to get better, I hope you feel better, get well soon. I really appreciate it. I, I love the outreach that we get from you guys. So truly, truly, thank you, thank you. We may not respond to every single one of those comments. It's just our life has been like this. Constantly between sick, the baby, this, doctor's appointments, craziness. It's just one thing after the other. So truly, guys, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe because we want to grow our numbers. We want to spread as much awareness as possible. That is going to be it, guys. I'm going to go back inside and lay down and uh, take it easy. So, guys, for now, adieu.